When I was a teenager, I was awkward, geeky, not all that smart, and worst of all, I had really, really, really sweaty hands. I was nervous meeting anyone because I would have to shake their hand and then they would notice. I tried to learn how to subtly wipe my hands on my pants right before I would shake and hope they wouldn't notice, but it didn't really work out too well. The sweating part went away after around I turned 18, 19, but that anxiety stuck. Now, don't get me wrong, anxiety can be a normal thing, but modern society and primal instinct can twist it into something unnatural in our minds, unreasonable and devastating. It takes on its own voice and lives rent-free in our heads for as long as we let it, and it reminds us at any time that if we think to change or do anything to fix ourselves, it just slams that door shut. My voice always reminded me of Vernon Dursley from Harry Potter, except not as British. What happened? I swear I don't know! I was unnatural, a freak, and nobody would want to be friends with me. So I'm different now. How did I beat that voice in the back of my head like a drum until he decided to up and leave and go somewhere else? Roughly, it is the five steps I'm going to share with you now, but streamlined so you can be done in five days instead of two years like me. At the end, I'll also let you in on the secrets to becoming friends with anyone using these five steps. One last caveat though before we start, if your anxiety is so crippling that you cannot leave the house, you have something like agoraphobia, or you have a general anxiety and not just social anxiety, this process is not going to work for you and I would recommend getting in touch with the local psychologist or psychiatrist in the area or through BetterHelp. The sponsor of this video, no, I'm just with you. Uh, I would never take a sponsor for medically related reasons as a doctor, and Hippocratic Oath and all. Anyway, steps. Step one, find a place near you, ideally within five minutes or less, that is fairly crowded. A mall would work well, and you could also do this at your job if there's a lot of people that you don't know there. What I want you to do is simple. Look five people in the eyes as you walk by. If they meet your eyes, smile and nod for bonus points. I want you to hear me in your head congratulating you like this. Oh, you're the best. They know one better. Okay, maybe not like that. That's it. Proceed to step two today or wait till tomorrow. It's up to you. Step two, go back to your new favorite place. Try to look five people in the eyes as you walk by again. Even if they don't meet your eyes as you walk by, say good morning. Bonus points if it's the afternoon or evening and correct yourself to them and laugh. The ability to engage in self-depreciating humor makes anyone admire you. It is a cheat code of social interaction. I'll give you that one for free. You're welcome. Feel no pressure to stop walking and keep talking to them. Keep on keeping on. Step three today, now, tomorrow, doesn't matter. Step three, you know where you are already. Try looking five people in the eyes as you walk by. Even if they don't meet your eyes as you walk by, say good morning. But here's the difference. Unlike the last step, after that I want you to compliment something about them. About their appearance, their bag, their walk, their smile, their anything. Doesn't matter. Deal no urge to stop walking and talk to them, even if they stop. Well, you can if you want. Next step, step four. This is where the steps get really good and might be a little more challenging. If it helps to do it with just one person at first, you can do that. And this is what it is. Step four is the exact same step three with one difference. When you say good morning, afternoon, evening, I like your X, Y, Z, you stop walking before they pass you. You stop walking. That's it. If they keep walking, let them go. You did your part. But if you've done it right, eye contact, they're in front of you somewhat when you stop, they're probably gonna stop. And you may be thinking now, well, f dude, what do I do now? Your heart very well may be beating a mile a minute. You may not be able to stop. <laughs> You may think, oh god, I can't do this, why am I doing this? I recommend, if this happens, go back to step 3. Really, when any step is too hard, take a deep breath, go back to the last step for another day or two, that's okay. This process can be done in as little time as a day, but if it takes you 10 days, or 20 days, or even a month, it doesn't really matter because it's better than living the next 10, 20, 30 years of your life or forever never talking to anyone or letting them see your best self. People deserve to know you. This can take as little as a day. It can take longer, but as little as a day. So what do you do if you've gotten to this point and they've stopped? 
listen to what they say. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, man. Oh, that's so nice. Nobody ever says anything nice to me. So they'll say something along those lines and find something else to compliment slash say. So you may be asking, okay, well, what, what do I say now? What do I, what do I say? Well, I want you to think of this ahead of time for this step. Think of your five favorite things to talk about. Mine are books, Harry Potter, obviously, video games, great food, jobs that people might do, travel. And then with that list in mind, think you look like you enjoyed X. Do you? Or are you someone that does Y? Just listen to what they have to say. If they say yes, great, keep talking if you want or leave if you want, no pressure. If they say no, same thing and you've made it you're now ready for step five. Step five is as simple as step four, but instead of walking away, you keep asking new questions about things they might like that you do. And here's the kicker, you don't leave for at least 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds? Well, with the questions you've come up with in advance, you should have found out something that they like and that you like in that time, or found out they're nothing like you, they don't like anything that you like, and that 30 seconds you can feel pretty well free to leave. If you want to stay, great, that's fine, but you don't have to. And really, that's it. You've completed the steps. This can be done in a day, or a week, or a year. But the most important thing is that you do it. You owe it to yourself tomorrow, next week, or next year to become the kind of person that can make friends anywhere. And you may be thinking, wait, dude, you haven't told me how this helps me make friends. Oh, well, let me tell you the secret. I have. The most important part of making friends is this. Establishing common ground, a connection that you share. If you like rock climbing or traveling across the country or spending time with your kids or reading murder mysteries, and they do too, you immediately form a connection. You immediately know them on a deeper level because you know yourself and the kind of person you are. You can talk about your interests on a deep level where they share at least one of those interests they can reciprocate. From there, it's a simple matter of staying in contact. I suppose that would be the unofficial step six. Ask for their contact information. If you're not confident or comfortable with getting their number, social media is completely fine. I would think of ways that you can stay in contact with them, that you can meet up and evolve your friendship over your shared interests together. If you do this with 100 people, will you have 100 friends? No. I mean, really, unless you really wanted to, I guess. At the end of this, I'll say this. You can consider me as your first friend in the process. Because watching this whole video means you share my interests in bettering yourself, and I like that in people. Now, can you do me a favor and stay in touch? I think my wife just got home and the baby's crying.